Hey everyone, welcome back to the uh, channel. So today um, we are just preparing um, to get our uh, flow screed and uh, liquid insulation put into the house. So first we're gonna do the liquid insulation, put in our underfloor heating pipes, and then we are going to go ahead and put in our liquid screed. So um, as I said in our previous videos, uh, we decided to go for a liquid insulation uh, simply because it gives better performance in the older part of the house. Um, just with the fact that we only have a 50 mil uh, bill look for our insulation and then 50 mil screed. And then also it's gonna encapsulate all of the uh, pipes that we have running along the floor um, before our underfloor heating pipes go in over on, on top of those. So just a better overall uh, U value um, achieved on the house. Now with the new parts of the building and with the garage, because we've got a lot more insulation there because we had it by design, um, it wouldn't make a huge difference, but definitely overall on the project, I think it's gonna be a better solution. It's also a lot less work for me. I don't have to start going cutting sheets of PIR and sticking all that down and cross bonding it and taping everything. So all of that liquid is gonna pour in here. It takes three to five days to set and then we can layer on the floor heating pipes all the way back to our manifolds uh, and then pour our liquid screed as you normally would. And that's gonna give us our buildup of 100 mil in the old part of the house and 175 mil in the new section, uh, the new extensions. And then in our garage, we'll be bringing us up to our level. I think it's overall, it's about 275 uh, build up with insulation and screed. So we're basically just doing a bit of clean up at the moment on the house. Um, I'll, I'll flick the camera around a few seconds uh, just to show you kind of what we've done. Uh, we're just basically preparing it room by room. We've had the plumber in to do all of our waste and to um, put all of the water pipes that are, are feeding our toilets and all of our sinks and basins all of those are going to be underneath the insulation so we put them under test so they're all pressurized now and you're better off doing that because of the weight of the insulation it's not a huge amount but when you're pouring a liquid you're going to have obviously a little added extra weight in that because of the water content so we want to make sure first we have no leaks and then we don't have any failures uh, of the pipe once that pours over so you're better off having it all on test we have it all on test now we haven't had any leaks we put in all of our waste as well so they're all done so basically we're going to clean out the house uh, and do a few other little jobs and doing a job today and i'm going to uh, talk a little bit more about that so as you can see um the large extension is pretty much cleared out we have some of our white cement and a few tools there that we've been using periodically and the wrappings from our previous video we did with our shower trays where we cut our shower trays. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all of those and clean out the whole house. Um, basically make sure that we have everything done for when the guys come to pour all of the liquid insulation. So just a few little things, move the wheelbarrow. We'll put a lot of this stuff upstairs temporarily anyway, because once the insulation is poured down, we can then go ahead and put in the underfloor heating pipes and then a quick turnaround and pour our liquid screed and that's gonna take about another three to five days. So we're looking overall worst case scenario, we've got, got about 13 to 14 days. So the next two weeks basically to do liquid insulation, underfloor heating pipes and liquid screed and be able to walk on everything afterwards and start going ahead, doing our final fix on our electrical, our plumbing, all of our painting and start our flooring and all of that. So basically it's it's a big part of the project now to get this done. So what we're doing is we're just cleaning everything up and tidying all up all the loose ends. So all of our cabling is pulled up off the floor. You can see our pipes are in here, our wastes are in there. So we've poured all our foam in there that we need to, to seal all that off. Our um, cable for our island area, that's been pulled through and we have that all contained inside um, a white condensate pipe and our wire sitting up off that. We have our miter saw out here now at the moment, uh, just because we're doing a small little job for our shower areas. And then as I said, all of this will move upstairs and the same for everything else in the house. So the job today is actually to build a couple of, or actually three shutter boxes uh, to uh, encapsulate where our wastes are for our showers. So. As you probably saw from our previous video, if you haven't looked already, have a look at our previous video where we cut and dry installed our shower trays. What we need to do is we actually need to make a shutter box. Now, what I've done is I've already made one, so I'll show you that. We had a little bit of leftover nine by uh, one inch 
uh, fascia soffit board um, and it's all treated timber. So we have some of that sitting there. Now it's a little bit wet, but it's not too bad to work with. So we have all that sitting there. So what we need to do basically is we're gonna pour all of our screed and everything into where our shower trays are going, just for that stability and support. We're actually going to run our underfloor heating pipes underneath the shower trays as well. So when the underfloor heating is on, obviously it's on basically on a constant basis, the house is just kept at a constant temperature. When you walk into the showers, it's gonna be nice and warm underfoot. So obviously it's very important in a bathroom because uh, you want it to be as warm as possible. So what we need to do is, uh, because we've dry fitted our shower trays, we know exactly where our wastes are going to be, but we need room to maneuver after our screed is poured for our waste to be installed. So what we've done here is we made a little shutter box and I'm gonna show you how I assemble this. So we have a little bit of our nine inch um, fascian soffit board. What we did is we did a 16 inch piece here, 16 inch piece on the far side, and then a nine inch piece either side. Stitched all that together, and I'll show you how I did that in a second. And then what we've done is we have concrete screwed uh, two little battens and connected the box to these. So pop these in here. So there's a concrete screw there and a concrete screw there, and that's all connected down onto the floor. We've also put in a little bit of plastic underneath. Our liquid screed and insulation is going to pour all the way around here. And then that's going to leave a cavity in here of this uh, box area. So we have a little bit of plastic just to make sure we have a nice seal. And because it's going to be bare floor afterwards, we might put in a bit of PIR underneath. But because it's going to be bare floor, we want to minimize any type of cold bridging or uh, moisture, um, kind of any type of dampness getting into the floor area. We probably will cut a piece of PIR in, pop that down and maybe just stick it with a little bit of foam. But it allows us that if we ever want to change the trays out or need to do some servicing, we can pull the trays out. It wouldn't be an easy job but we can do that and we'll have a cavity underneath for where our waste is going to be sitting so so we have our white uh two inch pipe running in here and then our waste is going to sit down into this box after we poured all this and it's sim simple as once the screed is poured we can undo, undo these two concrete screws and we can pull this box straight up and we're just going to have this perfect rectangle sitting inside our floor which is being poured so our job now is we've got the main bathroom done um, and we are going to go ahead and do our master ensuite and then obviously on the opposite side of this wall we have our uh, guest ensuite as well so we're going to make our little boxes for that so um how i built this up as i said i did two 16 inch long pieces and two nine inch short pieces um to make up our rectangle so what i've done here is as you can see we have our 16 inch piece here. Now what I'm using is I'm using riser cutter four by 50 mil screws. So 50 mil is perfect for this job. And four, uh, four mil screw is perfect because you don't want a big chunky screw, especially going through something this thin. So that's a nice kind of uh, size screw. It doesn't bust the timber, you won't get cracking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch this together really, really quickly. And then what we'll do is we're just gonna cut a little hole uh, into the box itself and that will be that done. And then we can go cut our plastic and screw that onto the floor. Okay, so that's both of those boxes prepared there now. So as you can see, they go together quite easy with the uh, screws. I was actually going to originally pop a batten in on these sections here, just to kind of kind of screw it all together. But the timber is actually strong enough with the four by 50 millimeter screws um, to, to hold itself together. Like that's very sturdy anyway. And it's not gonna have a lot of weight on it anyway. It's 100 mil overall of uh, liquid insulation and liquid screed poured at separate times. It's not all gonna flood in on top of it anyway. So we basically just got a piece of our uh, nine inch timber there um, that we had as an off cut and we just chopped off a two inch strip um, for each of these. So we have this one and this one and then we have these in here. So they're all connected. And basically all we did was just popped a little four by 50 and a four by 50 in there to hold that. We assembled everything on the on the slab here. So it's as level as it can possibly be. There is a little bit of cupping in the timber um, just because it's an off cut, it's been sitting in the rain. 
it's not a big deal anyway because we're only putting putting two little concrete screws in there and the same with the other box so it's basically just a temporary hold once everything is set we're going to pull all these back out again break them down pop the screws back in the box and um, use these as a kindling i guess um so basically all we need to do now is cut our little holes for our pipes to run through and uh, that'll be all set to go once installed and all done and we pull this box out our waste will sit down basically like that and it'll give us plenty of access to be able to get in afterwards what we can do is we can cut a little bit of pir basically pop this down on the pir like that uh mark around it and then we'll be able to cut a piece out and slot it down around just to give us that insulation you could even do that with 90 or 100 mil to bring it up level to the underside of the of the actual shower tray so you get as much insulation as possible but we'll see how that goes we'll, we'll cover that in a, in a future video so i'm going to cut those holes now and let's go and install okay so that's the last box installed there so you can kind of see the idea that we have here so um uh, basically we have our waste pipe obviously coming from our basin there and teeing up with what's coming from our shower and straight out of the building that will go out to a gully and then into our wastewater treatment so our box now is fixed in two points we have one fixing here and another fixing here it's a little bit dark but um that's all fixed to the floor now we have a bit of uh, plastic that's doubled over actually uh, on on all of them just to give extra protection um and that's all installed there now so you can kind of see the idea um, our floor will come up obviously around this and then we will pull the box back out again and we've got that completely cut out so we have no restriction um, afterwards for taking that out and our pipe runs in and then that's our little waste unit there, our high flow waste so that's got an articulating arm on it anyway but um, we will have we'll have the ability to once the floor is fitted we'll still have our cavity here so we can pull this in and out and um, so we can do whatever we need to do the pipe here has to have a um a larger section fitted to it and glued so it comes over the gray part here and um, so that will be done afterwards but just for now you can see kind of the idea of that sitting in there so our waste actually for this is right there so that would line up perfectly with our shower tray so that's all done and dusted there now and i'll just show you the other bathroom that we have um the master ensuite it's all done there as well so you can see it's 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 a nice kind of neat job to do um it's not difficult it takes a little bit of time because you're you're making up the boxes but once you've got them done like i showed you and a bit of plastic in underneath you'll be absolutely fine um, and, and that will give you enough of a cavity underneath so you don't have to worry about fitting off and finishing your wastes um, before your screed is poured so you can get all that done and then afterwards you take that out and you've got all the cavity that you need and then you can pop in your PIR after that. So I hope you guys have found that um, informative. Uh, if you do have any questions about it, let me know in the comments, I'm happy to answer, but it's just an easy job to do and it just makes your life a whole lot easier once the screed is poured that you have that little bit of space there. So um, so look, thanks very much for all of your likes and, and all of your views so far. I uh, hope you're enjoying the updates that we have here. So I'm gonna keep on uh, doing these little videos. Uh, if you do have any questions, pop them in the comments. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon as well. And um, so when we pop up a new video, you'll get that little notification. Um, and look forward to seeing you next time.